I'm Stephanie Di Pasquale, the author of Home Rookies, and today I'm going to teach you how to make curtains for your kitchen window. To complete this project, you need fabric of your choice, a ruler, a pencil and paper to mark down your measurements with, a chalk marking tool to transfer those measurements onto your fabric, pins to hold everything together, and a sewing machine with a blind hem foot and the blind hem foot comes with most sewing machines and it has a little rudder on the bottom and that helps keep everything even as you're sewing. The first thing you have to do is measure your window to figure out how large we have to cut the panels for the curtains. We're going to cut two panels and they're both going to be the same size. So you measure from bracket to bracket and then you're going to add four inches to that measurement for your hems and that's how wide each panel is going to be. The second measurement you're going to take is from the top of the curtain rods to wherever you would like your curtains to end. And then you're going to add 12 inches to that measurement and that will give you enough for your bottom hem and your rod pocket. If you're using clips to hang your curtain on the curtain rod, then measure the height of the clips and subtract that from the height of your curtain panel that you're going to cut. Um, if you're using a rod pocket, then you'll want to add three inches to the height of your curtain panel. Once you've figured out your measurements, write them down on a sheet of paper. You want to write down the size you need to cut your material and the size that the curtain panel needs to be when it's finished and hemmed up. And that way you have it for a quick reference and you're not constantly going back to remeasure and second guessing yourself. So now what we have to do is we have to measure um, our fabric, transfer the measurements to that, and cut it out. And one note about purchasing fabric, if this is your first time making curtain panels, I suggest buying 54 inch wide fabric that is made specifically for home decorating. It comes on big rolls like this and it's about 10 to 14 inches wider than the cotton fabric you'll find on bolts at the fabric store. So that way you won't have to piece um, pieces of fabric together to get them wide enough to cover your window. They'll already be wide enough when you purchase it. Um, I purchased a plaid, and if this is your first time working with home decorating fabric, don't do plaid because it can be kind of hairy to get all those lines to match up straight. Same with stripes. So go for an all over print if this is your first time. So what we need to do is we need to measure first our um, height of our curtain panels. And for me, that is 33 inches. So I've got just a regular ruler that you would use if you were working around the house. And I'm going to line that up so that the 33 inch mark is even with the bottom of my fabric. If your fabric is not even when it's cut, go ahead and make sure and square it up. You can use a carpenter square to make sure that it's square and you're going to do the same process that we're doing here um, to do that. So now I just have a chalk marking tool and I'm going to make a mark at the top of my 33 inch mark. And I'm going to move my ruler down. And I'm going to come over and check and make sure that it is where it needs to be and that it's straight. And I'm going to make another mark. And you keep doing this until you've gone all the way down the width of your fabric. And now we need to connect those hash marks that we marked on the fabric so that we have a line to cut on. And I'm just going to take the same ruler I had before and I'm going to line it up with those hash marks. And I'm going to take my chalk marking tool and just drag it across to get a nice dark line to cut on. And then you just do this all the way down the width of your fabric. Now we're going to cut on the line that we just marked. I recommend using a sharp pair of scissors uh, that you use exclusively for sewing. Now before we cut the width of the panels, we need to cut off the fabric selvages. And the selvage is the edge of the fabric that is woven uh, in a different way so that it won't fray. And on some fabrics, it's white all along the edge, and then it has some identifying information about what the fabric is. On this one, it's this green uh, stripe that doesn't appear anywhere else in the fabric. So I'm just going to cut right along that line to cut it off. 
And the reason why we want to cut it off is because since it has a different weave than the rest of the fabric, it will not hang the same as the rest of it when if you leave it in when you make your curtains. And you definitely want your curtains to hang straight, so make sure you cut off your selvages. Now we're going to do the exact same process that we did to measure the height of the curtain as we are to measure the width. We're going to line the edge of the ruler up with the measurement that we need and make sure it is straight across and put a little hash mark with the chalk line and then keep doing that at a few intervals apart going down connect your hash lines again and cut down the line to create your curtain panel now we're going to prepare our fabric to sew a three inch double hem on the top and bottom of our curtain panel so I've turned the fabric so that the wrong side is up because we want to sew the hem to the back side and I've got my ruler and I'm going to pull my fabric up until it is even with a three inch line and then I'm going to pull the ruler out make sure everything is lined up square this is why plaids are hard to work with because you have to make sure that everything is square and lined up with the lines and I do one side and then I come over to the other side and do the same thing. And I just kind of pull the fabric up until I hit that three inch mark, remove the ruler while holding the fabric in place with my hand, adjusting to make sure everything lines up, and then just stick a pin in there. And once I have the two sides, then I do the center, and then I work out from there. And I'll probably put about five pins in each of these panels. So do that for both sides. Now we are going to press this and before I press everything I always shoot it with a little bit of spray starch and that just helps set that crease a little more and that way you won't it'll be easier when it comes time to sew everything together. So I'm just moving my iron over this crease to set in the three inch seam that we already pinned. Like so. Now we just pull these pins out. And we're going to flip it over for the second three inch. And you kind of just push it and you'll feel it hit when that fabric is at the bottom. And I'll put a pin in that to keep it in place. And then I'll do the same thing at this end and then go to the center again. And then once you have all this pre er, pinned, put a little bit more spray starch on it and press that again. And make sure you do that for both sides of the top and bottom of both panels. Now before you sew the hems together, you want to double check that the curtain panels are the correct height that you measured them for. So go back to your sheet, see what height your curtains are supposed to be once they're finished, and then measure at the side and the center to make sure that they all fit the measurement that they're supposed to be. If one of them is off, just adjust a little bit, press it in place until it fits, because if it's off now, it's not going to get any better when you sew, and then you're going to have a crooked curtain. When you do the blind hem stitch, the trickiest part is arranging the fabric in the correct way. So I have it arranged right now with the back side up and the hems facing me. I'm going to flip that hem underneath, but not completely underneath. I'm going to leave just about an eighth of an inch overlap here. So this is the hem, and then here's the body of the fabric here. And then this is where we're going to line up the lip that is underneath that rudder that's underneath the blind hem is going to go right along this folded edge here and then we're going to be stitching right here and right here when we put it into the machine. So I'm going to bring that right over to the machine and consult your sewing machine manual to find out what stitch you're supposed to use for the blind hem. Uh, this is a non-stretchy fabric so we're going to use that. Now what it's going to do is it's going to take one stitch in through all three layers and then several other stitches in that hem. And because the stitch length is so short, when we open that up, 
it's going to lie flat and the stitch is going to be practically invisible from the front. And what I do here is once I've been sewing a little bit, I take a pin and I put it, I take a pin and I put it about four or five inches out. And this is a little bit of quality control for working with a plaid because it makes sure I can get all my lines lined up. But it also means I can concentrate more on the stitch coming out right and less on making sure I'm holding the fabric perfectly in line. When you pull the uh, double hem out of the sewing machine, it's going to have a little bit of a pleat in there. So you kind of have to stretch it to get those uh, seams to open up. So what I do is I put my hands where the blind hem is and then I grab the entire top with my whole hand and just sort of straighten that out. You don't want to pull it like this because that can stretch your fabric, but if you grab it with your whole hand and straighten it out, then that will keep everything nice and straight so that it will look good when you hang it. And then after that, I kind of just run over it with the iron to just make sure everything is good and flat. So do that for both sides of both of your curtain panels. I'm gonna be hanging my curtain panels with clips, but if you'd like to have a traditional rod pocket where the curtain covers the entire rod, what you're gonna do is you're going to sew, this is our, uh, top hem, you're going to sew one and a half inches uh, down from your hem here and that will give you the rod pocket that you need to put the casing in. But what we're going to do next is do the side hems and this is the exact same process as the other hems, just this time we're doing a one inch double hem. So I've got my ruler and I'm going to line it up so that the edge of the fabric is even with the one inch mark and I'm paying close attention that it is even on the sides here because you want to have a nice sharp corner there. I'm going to put a pin in and that pin wasn't going in very well. Sometimes they get old and they don't like to behave very well. And you're going through a lot of layers here so do take your time and be careful. And then again we're going to do the same thing on the corner and then in the center and then you press it and spray it and then we're going to flip it over again and stitch and then you are completely done with your uh, curtain panel.